Welcome back, SolidWorks community, to our series celebrating the Flash, where we are modeling his uniquely shaped mask. We left off in part one of the series with the initial layout of the mask's surfaces complete. Now let's add the eye cutout and eyebrow details. I'm going to use a different technique to create the eye cutout. I'll first sketch on the right plane and draw a portion of the eye outline using a few splines, referencing the side view image we imported in part one. Then exit the sketch and navigate to Curves, Project Curve, ensure the Sketch on Faces projection type is selected, and select the surfaces to project this sketch onto. Now, sketching on the front plane, use the Convert Entities tool to transfer this projected sketch onto the front plane. Then I'll use the Spline tool to complete the shape of the eye outline. Once happy with the shape of the eye, exit the sketch and navigate to Insert, Features, Split to once again cut away the eye portion of the surface. Now let's add this unique eyebrow detail to the mask. We'll begin building this by creating two 3D profiles and two 3D guide curves, then filling them in with a few different surface tools. First, it looks like I need to adjust the shape of my eye a bit, so let's re-enter that sketch and adjust the spline points. I just want the top point of my outline to intersect the corner of the eye cutout on the reference image. Now create a new sketch on the front plane, and I'm going to draw in an open spline just above the eyebrow that matches the shape of the eyebrow. This will be the top guide rail for our surface. Exit the sketch and project this sketch onto the mask surface. Now again, sketching on the front plane, I'm drawing a straight line from the inside corner of the eye to where the eyebrow sketch terminates. This will be the first profile. And we'll project that sketch to the surface as well. Now we can create the second profile of the eyebrow. First, let's create a reference plane to sketch on. Navigate to Reference Geometry, Plane. First, select the right plane. Then I'll select this outermost point of the eyebrow sketch to make this plane coincident to. Now, sketching on this plane, I'll create another open contour in preparation for a boundary surface. This eyebrow has sort of an arced triangular shape. You can again use the images we imported as a reference. And once you're happy with the shape, exit the sketch. Now we need to add one more guide curve, and I'll do this in the 3D Sketch environment. Navigate to Sketch, 3D Sketch, and use the Convert Entities tool to convert the top edges of the eye cutout to a sketch entity. I'm also converting this bottom portion of the eyebrow profile to this sketch, which I'll convert to a construction line. This line will act as a stopping point that we can use the Trim Entities tool to cut the other line back to. Now create a boundary surface. First, under Direction 1, selecting the two profiles we created, then move to Direction 2 to select the two guide curves, and hit OK. And now to start modeling the other portion of this eyebrow. Enter the 3D sketch environment again, and we'll create a guide curve with a simple spline whose endpoints are coincident with the outer corner of the eye and the peak of the eyebrow. And make sure to make this spline tangent to the edge at the peak of the eyebrow. Exit the sketch and create a second guide curve in another 3D sketch, using the Convert Entities tool to convert the rest of the top edge of the eye cutout, as well as the bottom portion of the eyebrow profile, over to the sketch. Then convert the eyebrow profile edge to a construction line, and use the Trim Entities tool to cut away the unneeded portion of this guide curve. Now enter the Boundary Surface tool again. This time we can just use a single profile under Direction 1, which is the eyebrow profile we created earlier, and under Direction 2, select the two guide curves we created.
To join these two surfaces together, navigate to the Knit Surface tool found in the Surfaces Command Manager. Select the two surfaces, ensure the Merge Entities option is selected, and click OK. So now I need to trim this eyebrow surface to be flush with the mask surface, but we need to extend the eyebrow surface a bit to make sure it fully overlaps the mask surface. Let's hide the mask surface, then navigate to Extend Surface, found in the Surfaces tab of the Command Manager. Select the edge of the surface you'd like to extend, in this case we're extending this edge 0.13 inches, and click OK. Now to trim this surface away, navigate to the Trim Surface tool in the Command Manager, and under Trim Type, let's select Mutual. Then select both of our surfaces, and with the Remove Selections option chosen, I'll click the surfaces to trim away. So now we're ready to convert these surfaces to solids. First, let's convert the eyebrow section to a solid by using the Filled Surface tool. Here we simply right click on one of the open edges and click on Select Open Loop to select the entire perimeter. Ensure the Merge Result and Create Solid options are selected and click OK. Then I'm going to thicken this back face a bit to make sure it overlaps the outer surface of the mask. First, enter the Offset Surface tool and select this back surface. I'm going to enter a value of 0 to just copy the exact surface over. Then, navigate to the Thicken tool, select the newly created surface, and I'll thicken this 0 0.005 inches, making sure the Merge Result option is turned on, and click OK. Now, unhide the mask surface and we'll thicken this surface 0 0.05 inches to the inside using the Thicken tool. Now under the Features tab of the Command Manager, you'll find the Combine tool. In the Combine Properties Manager, ensure the Add option is selected under Operation Type, and select the two solid bodies we created. Finally, to clean up the transitions a bit with several fillets. Here, I'm first creating a few simple fillets. Now for the transition at the top of the eyebrow, I'll use the variable fillet option to taper the fillet from zero at the outside corner of the eye to a heavier 0.5 inch fillet in the center. And the same thing for the center of the eyebrow, a variable fillet transitioning from zero to 0 0.125 inches at the center. Lastly, I'll add some fillets in the mouth area. Here I'm using the multi-radius fillet option as I want one of the selected edges to have a heavier fillet than the others. Alright SOLIDWORKS users, this concludes part 2 of the series. Stay tuned for the third and final part of the series where we'll add the lightning bolt details to the Flash's mask.